Now let's look at a couple of immunostains before we finish up. And immunostains, again, are antibodies that are targeted at certain proteins. And they are then tagged with a colored molecule. And that lets us see what, what kind of proteins we're actually uh, dealing with here. So let's start with uh, cytokeratin. So we said cytokeratin is an intermediate filament. Oops, we'll turn it around. Is an intermediate filament that um, fills up epithelial cells of all sorts. So all epithelial cells in the whole human body should have cytokeratin. They sometimes have different types of keratin, but this is a, a, uh, a, um, a marker. This one right here is a pan cytokeratin. So it stains multiple different types of keratin so that it will stain pretty much every type of keratin ideally um, that's out there. So if we see that positive, we know that what we're dealing with is an epithelial cell. So here, let's get it in focus. So there's the normal epidermis, and you can see the epidermis is bright, uh, this dark brown color, because it's filled with keratin filaments, whereas the dermis, which is made of collagen, is totally negative for uh, keratin. So keratin highlights the normal epidermis. And then when we look down at the structures in the epidermis, you can also see, I'm sorry, the structures down in the dermis, you can see that these things we talked about earlier, the hair follicle, also made of epithelium, so it's keratin positive. The sweat glands also made of epithelium, so they're keratin positive. So all these um, cells that are that are are brown are some sort of epithelial cell. So here we have sweat sweat glands, hair follicle, and then we already talked about that the surface in this uh, skin, the epidermal surface, is made of keratin as well. And so we can use the reason we use these immunostains is to help us when we have tumors. If we're not sure what type of cell the tumor is coming from, we can use immunostains to help us determine if the cell is epithelial or if it's muscle or nerve or melanocyte origin. And that makes a big difference because those tumors all um, have different properties that we uh, pay attention to. So the next thing we're going to look at is uh, S100 protein. And the reason I'm showing you S100 protein is that it does, it stains nerve and some other things, and it stains melanocytes in the epidermis. So it will stain melanocytes along the basal layer. So these little guys down at the bottom here. Let's find them. These little cells sitting on the bottom basal layer that are uh, dark brown, those are melanocytes. And you can see they have these little branches. Those are, we call them dendrites. Those are the branches that feed melanin to the neighboring keratinocytes. So melanocytes are S100 positive, all right? But they're not the only cell in the epidermis that's S100 positive. You can see another branching little cell up here in the mid layer of the epidermis. Those are Langerhans cells. The only reason I can tell them apart is because of where they're located in this uh, skin, which is actually a piece of normal epidermis. So you have, uh, you have S100 positive melanocytes down at the basal layer, and then also Langerhans cells, which again are antigen processing cells up there in the uh, mid portion of the epidermis. And then also uh, fat, adipocytes, tend to stain with S100 as well. So you can see S100 staining these fat cells here in the uh, subcutis. So S100 is not a very useful stain for fatty tumors, but it does stain normal fat. And oh, it will stain nerve as well, but I didn't have a good nerve to show in that piece. And then here is a stain for a muscle marker called Desmin. Desmin is a muscle protein and you can see actually that the epidermis is dead negative, right? Completely negative for this marker. But down in the dermis, you can see these bundles that are dark brown. Those are the smooth muscle bundles, the erector pili muscles that we talked about uh, earlier in the video, that those are the muscles that give you kind of goosebumps, right? And they, they hook up to hair follicles. And then also look at these round little uh, donut shaped rings around here. Those are, are um, uh, blood vessels. All right, so as opposed to Desmin around vessels uh, highlighting the wall, Let's look at this immunostain. This is an immunostain uh, called CD31. And so you can see it's actually staining the uh, central lining of the vessel, the, the lining of the lumen, which are the endothelial cells. But the muscle wall around the outside is actually completely negative. So again, you can tell that the, the inner lining and the wall of the vessel are actually made of different components. And you can see all these little uh, vessels around here, these smaller um, capillaries. They all have uh, the lining cells, the endothelial cells are um, staining with CD31. And CD34 is another marker that does the same thing. It stains the, um, the lining cells of the vessels. And it will, uh, it will stain both lymphatics and um, arteries and veins. Endothelium of any kind will stain um, with, uh, these, uh, with this marker.
So again, one more look there. That's the, the lumen um, being lined by endothelial cells, which are positive on a CD31 immunostain. All right, and uh, one other immunostain to show is um, a stain called SOX10, and it's a, a nuclear marker. It's a protein that's in the nucleus of melanocytes. And um, you can see this is, I'm just showing this to highlight um, that the melanocytes normally are present on the basal layer of the, the epidermis, and they're kind of spaced out. Now this is a patient with a lot of sun damage, and so the, the number of melanocytes kind of increases a little bit in sun damaged skin. But they, they're down there on the basal layer for the most part. They're spread out with um, kind of one melanocyte for every seven to 10 keratinocytes, uh, depending on who you ask and where exactly you are on the body. And um, we'll look a little closer. And you can see this is highlighting the nucleus of the cell. So we showed the S100 earlier that showed both the, the cytoplasm and the nucleus. The um, SOX10 mostly highlights just the nucleus, so it just helps you see very nicely how many um, cells are there. And it will also stain other things too, like it stains uh, Schwann cells and nerves. So it's not a perfectly specific marker, but it's, it stains both benign and malignant melanocytes, and it will also stain um, most nerves. I'm not sure if we have a nerve down here, but we can look and see if there's any nerve in the... The dermis. I'm not seeing one. So anyway, that's um, that's a SOX10 immunostain, and that's just to highlight kind of the normal pattern of how melanocytes are um, situated in the basal layer of the um, epidermis.